This is WYMT Mountain Sports, your home for the Kentucky Wildcats and local high school sports. The football cats had to deal with Dak Saturday, and now they get to deal with a rocket science major. No, really. Tennessee quarterback Josh Dobbs is majoring in rocket science. The junior quarterback for the Vols having a nice year so far. 14 total touchdowns, nine in the air, five on the ground. Kentucky head football coach Mark Stoops sees similarities to Dak Prescott. They're both, you know, equally as talented, I would say, running it. You know, um, Dak is just throwing it so much more. You know, they're, they're just... Uh, they're so, you know, they're just what they choose to do, I guess, but they both can throw it when they want to, but, uh, but uh, they're both uh, very elusive, very strong, you know, so it's a good combination. All right, a big problem Butch Jones' team has had this season is closing out football games. The Vols have lost every game by six points or less, and in two of their four losses, they had the lead going into the fourth quarter. Here's Butch. We have had opportunities to close games out, and unfortunately, we've come up short. And, you know, sometimes we could have closed games out maybe in the third quarter, or even the second quarter, not just the fourth quarter. But, uh, you know, I think some of it, I, I talked to a lot of coaches. Uh, you know, a lot of individuals said you know, sometimes it's a byproduct of lack of depth uh, when you have players playing 70, 80 plays, uh, the ability to close games out. But I think it's more mentality. The Cats and the Vols will kick off at 7.30 on the SEC Network on Saturday. In this week's edition of Chalk Talk, Lauren Cash asks Freddie Maggard his thoughts on the Cats' loss to Mississippi State. And the former UK quarterback also gives his opinion on how talented this Vols team is coming in on Saturday. Well, welcome in to a chilly edition of Chalk Talk. A little overcast here at Commonwealth <laughs> Stadium. Lauren Cash here alongside Freddie Maggard. Freddie, the Mississippi State game, real quickly, your analysis. Mississippi State, I, I didn't like a single matchup going into that game for Kentucky. Uh, all the veteran players on Mississippi State, the development, uh, the benefit of having bowl practices, red shirts across the board. Mississippi State started only one red shirt uh, freshman. The rest were juniors and seniors. Kentucky, the last uh, minute of the first half, the game got away from Kentucky, and at that point it was over. I think Dak Prescott uh, is not only the best quarterback in the SEC, but one of, if not the best quarterback in the country. And to, with Kentucky lacked a pass rush, and if you give a Heisman candidate and an All-American candidate like Dak Prescott that kind of time, he's going to find somebody open. And uh, Kentucky just could not maintain offensive flow, especially on first down. On six occasions on first down, Kentucky was penalized on three plays on first down and had three drop passes on first down. So in essence, when half your drives are starting, at second and 10 or worse, then you don't give yourself a good chance to win the football game. Transitioning now to the Tennessee game this Saturday, you know, when you look at Kentucky and Tennessee this season, there's some similarities you can mm -hmm. draw within their schedule. Both have been in very close games, won some, lost some they maybe shouldn't have. You know, Butch Jones in his third season right. as his co coach Stoops. What have you seen also maybe similarities or something that maybe Kentucky's closed the gap on with UT? Well, I think first of all, you have to look at the amount of talent on the roster. Tennessee has, other than Georgia, probably the most future NFL players that Kentucky will see this year. Uh, the best football team Kentucky will play all year was Mississippi State. But you have to realize with Tennessee, the streak is a roughly, what, 30 years old? In a span of 30 years, Tennessee, the university has outspent the University of Kentucky 100 to 1 in facilities. Kentucky is just now starting to catch back up. That has a lot to do with it, uh, but I think Kentucky has a chance to beat Tennessee. Both teams are fairly young. Both have lost close games. Uh, Tennessee has, has played a harder schedule with Oklahoma, Florida, Arkansas beat Tennessee. And then with the latest, the way Tennessee played against Alabama should be encouraging for volunteer fans. But both teams need this win. Kentucky to sustain and get edge closer to bowl eligibility. Many national uh, pundits are picking Tennessee to win out. So something's got to give on Saturday. I think Kentucky bounces back and plays much better. This is a better matchup for Kentucky than at Mississippi State. Kentucky looks to snap a two game losing streak and get back to 500 on the season with a win Saturday. 730 kick time on the SEC Network. For Freddie Maggard, I'm Lauren Cash for WYMT Mountain Sports. 
Good stuff as always. Welcome back. Blue white scrimmage tomorrow night for the basketball cats inside Rupp Arena. Seven o'clock tip time on the SEC network. If you're not going to the game, Alex Pointhris coming back from his torn ACL. Head coach John Calipari said he did miss a few days with a knee bruise, but Pointhris says he's fine. I mean, coming along good. You know, I'm real confident in my knee, real confident in myself, real confident in my abilities. He was out for about three or four days because he bruised the knee. Uh, it was a different, it may have been the other knee, but. He missed three days and he came back a little bit last night, yesterday. But, you know, um, he just got to play his way through it and start playing. Also want to mention tonight, Lene Harper is leaving the UK women's basketball team. The 5'8 guard is a former McDonald's All-American. She was one of three returning starters this season. She led the Cats in rebounding last year, averaging seven per game. She put out a long statement on Twitter, if you want to go there and read it, calling it one of the toughest decisions of her life. Now to some highlights. Season over for these guys, the number one ranked team in the nation in NAIA. The number one ranked U Pike Bears opening their season with Central Pennsylvania. First half, KK, how's that shot going for you? Oh, just fine, man. KK goes for 19 points. Later, newcomer Michael Lewis, a little jab, and then he goes hard to the paint. The big man showing off his skills, Bears up by seven. Now it's senior Colt Chapman. All right, it's game one, but this kid... He getting on the floor and he doing it all. The steal, then give it up to KK who gives it up to Makari Brooks. He finished with 22 points and then Chapman going around his back. He looked comfortable tonight. Dimitri Reeves, that's buckets. The top ranked Bears looking mid-season form 118-84. Ohio Eastern comes to Pikeville Halloween night this Saturday. Monday night football in Arizona. The Cardinals hosting the Baltimore Ravens and Joe Flacco and the Ravens. And they're not very good this year. They're one in five on the season. First quarter, Baltimore up 3-0. Chris Johnson, get off me. He escapes, bounces it to the outside, and high steps into the end zone. 26 yards on the score. Cards up 7-3. Second quarter now, same score. Justin Forsett, hey, I can do it too. 14 yards on the touchdown run. The Cardinals currently lead this game 26-18 with 52 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Well, two teams flip-flop positions in this week's Alice Lloyd College Mountain Top 10, but that's all the movement there is in the new rankings. Southwestern falls down from number three to number four after getting crushed by the number one team in the mountains. Pulaski County still on top, of course. Uh, Belfry up to number three and a fun matchup to watch for this Friday night as undefeated Paintsville closes out the season on the road. The sixth ranked Tigers go to number 10 Shelby Valley. Hope you like the new set. We'll be back after this.